Hello and welcome to my very first modding video. Certainly I've watched many of these and lots of great guys have come before me and uh, guys and gals have come before me doing modding. Uh, but I've been doing it for a couple years now exclusively on Fallout 4 because it's a favorite game of mine. So I uh, thought one thing that I have never seen as far as videos, never seen a beginning to end video, somebody that just started from nothing in the almost nothing and got to a mod. So I thought I'd make a quick, simple, simple mod from beginning to end. Let's talk, we're talking start the game or start the mod editor create the mod, upload the mod, all that stuff. Test it out. So let's get started. Okay, so what do you have to do? Well, you have to have the game, obviously. You're gonna have to have the game you wanna mod. And let's talk about, we're only talking about Fallout here. So you have to have Fallout, of course. And you have to have um, something to do the modding in. Now, some mods are easy. You can just replace some files sometimes. Uh, you don't even need any kind of editor to edit the game and create a, a patch file, um, a plugin file, as it's called, and you don't need anything for that. But if you're going to create a plugin file, you really have to have some kind of editor. Uh, there's kind of two, really. There's Fallout 4 Edit that's been around for a long time, and there's the Creation Kit, which has been put together by Bethesda. That's the one I use. I mean, it's the one they put out. It works pretty well. I, it's not the easiest to use in some ways, and it crashes sometimes. But in general, it's pretty darn good. Um, so, you know, you have to get that. You can get these from Steam. You can get Fallout 4 from Steam nowadays. You can get Creation Kit from Steam. There's no more going to Bethesda Launcher. They used to have their own um, way to download games and things and stuff from Bethesda. Now you can get script creation kit right off of Steam nowadays. So yeah, download both of those. Um, another thing that's good to know about is they have a website, creationkit.com. You type creationkit.com, you come right here. Come right to this home page. I pick your game. These are two very commonly Bethesda modded games, Skyrim and Fallout. Uh, as I said, I Doing Fallout, so I just you click over on Fallout, and <clears throat> there's a wealth of information here on all the documentation. Now it's not complete uh, by any means. There's a lot of things left out, and there's a lot of little tricky things that are uh, lower knowledge that you need to know. That like, oh yeah, this is a very specific thing that you need to remember. But it's pretty good. Uh, it's certainly better than nothing. Uh, most things are on there. Um, okay, so. You know, these are the two things you're going to work with mostly. Creation kit and looking things up on here, trying to find out information about what you want to do. So the first thing you need to do when you want to create a mod is you need to think of something. What do you want to do? What do you want to make? Um, I have something in mind already that I wanted. It's, there's a a good mod that's out there that's kind of fun. Uh, it's called a myopia, sim myopia simulator, and that's uh, to simulate with they need glasses for for far vision uh, and that's a fine mod it works just perfect actually um, makes things blurry uh, and you can't see anything when you don't have eyeglasses on problem is you know when you start the game you're not given eyeglasses in the game uh, they never intended and expected that they would have um, people that have near and far sighted in fallout um, the glasses are just for decorations not functional the other myopia simulator makes it functional, but then you don't have any glasses. And it's kind of doesn't make any sense that you would not, by the time you got into the game, have fig the character would have figured out where to obtain a pair of glasses and go to a uh, optometrist and get some glasses and get that figured out. Um, otherwise, you start the game with blurry vision, and that doesn't really make any sense. I'm not going to go into the game and show that. You can imagine that the whole game starts out and you're just blurry. So um, really we want to make it so that in the very beginning of the game you're giving glasses. And then 
if necessary, later on. Um, not to spoil anything, but there's a second part to the game, which is the real game. The first part of the game is really just the tutorial almost. And the second part is uh, uh, after, uh, after some uh, nuclear war happens and you're uh, in the wasteland after the, the bombs and you have to have some classes there too. It's, it's kind of uh, not fair to start you out with that without one pair of glasses. Um, it, it just makes sense that you would have that. Um, so the very first thing we need to figure out is how to get them into the, the game in the very beginning. Uh, and that's pretty much a research mission. Uh, as with all things with mods, a lot of this stuff is researching how the game works and and learning about how the solid systems work and trying to figure out you know, how you to get it to be the way you want. This is uh, one of the things I think that's, as I said, is missing, is that they don't tell you how to get started on thinking of a mod, creating a mod, researching how to get it in there. And just they get started with talking about game systems and stuff. And nobody ever, uh, nobody ever discusses how do you even get started? So, so this is where this is going to fill in right now that you can at least uh, have some idea of how to get started. And this might take more than one video, but okay, let's get started on this. Okay, you're, you're in here, you want to okay, start figuring out how do I get the glasses in the very beginning of the game? Okay, so when you get this creation kit for Fallout, you're, you're going to start it up. So that's the first thing that that's this is let's we'll just pretend that I've never launched this before although I'm in here all the time you would press this button and start it and uh, you, it loads it's gonna load slower for you maybe if you don't have a lot of memory I have a ton of memory on the system <clears throat> I maxed out the mo memory I have memory makes a big difference in the creation kit both in how fast it loads and also how how <laughs> How much you want it to crash if you more memory helps with it crashing less so it just eats up a lot of memory running this thing so how do you want to create a mod well when you create a mod you have to load up fallout the game and and make a mod off of the game itself so you need to pick um what game resource files you want to load off of because you come in here and there's nothing right? you can see there's there's no data None of these things have anything. These are all different. These things you see on the side here are all different elements in the game. And there's some basic things that are here. But for the most part, things that are uh, you would expect to be in the game are not in here. There's, there's um, quests, um, for example, are the main um, resource that lets you go from one part of the game to another. So each quest is a different um, process that's happening. And um, and it's a way of doing multi-threading really in the game. And so, um, which don't worry about multi-threading if you're not a programmer, but it's a, uh, each quest is something that's different, a different system that's running in the game. And normally in Fallout, there'd be a lot of these. But in, um, right now you see there's none of them. So you have to start out with just loading the game itself. Um, and we'll get into that in just one second. So how do we pick which file we want to have for the game? You go up to File here, and you go to Data. So you'll see here there's a lot of different mods I have installed. Um, normally you'll just see if you just have the base game, you'll just see this, Fallout 4 ESM. These are the digital license content. They're the uh, additional game add-ons that you can buy. I have the edition that has all of them. So, you know, um, it's, you know, it's, you'll have, you know, if you have other mods installed already, you'll see these. You just have to pick the what you want to base the files off of. If you just want the base game, you just end up picking, you know, double clicking here on the first one, and, and that's really all you need to do. 
Uh, if you just want the base game, you just double click on the Fallout 4 ESM. M is for uh, master file, basically, the, the main file. Um, and uh, that's all you want. You'll just click OK. And then you'll wait. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video while we wait. So that took a good minute, 30 seconds to a minute, with my system that's maxed on memory. So it uh, probably will take more time on yours, unless you have a lot of memory too. So as you see, we were had the quest selected. And now you can see lots of quests. This is all the, this is the game, really. All these different quests make up the base game of Fallout. Fallout 4. So, so again, this was this video is focused on how do you just start from nothing? You know, this is the first time you've ever loaded the thing. You don't know anything. So do you have an idea for a mod and how do you just get started with it? So as I said, you I mean, you kind of have to know the game a little bit. You have to have played it to make a mod. You really have to have played it a little bit to at least have some idea of, you know, how the game flow is and where you might want to make a change and stuff like that. Uh, for me, as I was saying, I wanted to, to put glasses <clears throat> on the player when they first start in the... Uh, basically in the very beginning of the game. Um, because like I said, you you would have glasses by then, or at least there would be glasses somewhere that you could get. Um, so I'd like to try and make it so that the glasses are just put on you when you first start the game. I'm not sure if that's gonna be possible, but we're gonna, that's why I'm doing this one because I don't even know if it's possible. We're gonna figure out if it is. If there's any long research thing I need to research, I'll just pause the video. So, some things here. So here's all the items that are in the game, all the different objects of that make up the game here. Um, right now, I don't need to talk to you about what all these different things do, but let's just say they all have to do with something around the game. Actors or different people in the game, different... <coughs> um, non-player characters or different monsters and things you'll find in the game. Um, as I said, the quests are the different parts of the game itself. Um, uh, you know, there's things like items, like armor items or weapons in the game. Um, there's, even in Fallout, there's magic items, spells and potions and magic effects. Obviously not used as much in something like fantasy game like Skyrim, but they still have some kinds of effects that happen in the game. So all these are different things that happen in the game. And then we're even talking, there's things down here like furniture. Um, you know, these are, um, you know, stools, chairs, things like that. Um, doors for here. You know, uh, it's just... Everything that's in the game is somehow represented in, in this list of objects. Um, so that's the objects. Now, where how do they get into... You think about these are the objects in the game. Now, and now there's... How is how do these things get into the world? And the, the, the world that you're traveling through in the game. Well, the world is represented um, in basically what they call cells and cells are little square partitions that the whole world is divided up into. So <clears throat> this other window over here is called cell view. And this is shows you the, the different locations basically that you can go to in the game. Now, right now we have selected interiors, which are when a, a fantasy game like Skyrim would be something like dungeons, you know, um, but they're called interiors and in fallout. And uh, it's basically buildings that you go inside that are not outside in the main world. So the, there are other um, main worlds here. Um, the, uh, you know, 
they're split up into different sections. So in the main game, when you start the, the game to get going, there's one world called Commonwealth. Most things in the outside are in this Commonwealth. That's like the main part of the game. <clears throat> um, recent jet cells just tells you recent ones that you've gone to and opened up recently. It's just a convenience feature, really. Um, uh, Diamond City is a city that you find later on. It has its own interior to it. Um, Good Neighbors, again, another city that you find later on in the game. And uh, it has its own interior. The one that you start the game, though, in is this one. It's called Sanctuary Hills World. This is the tutorial, very beginning of the game here. And this is the one that I'm wanting to change. Uh, and I want to make a quest that triggers when you're in this Sanctuary Hills world. And when that quest triggers, um, you're going to get something. So I need to research into this and figure out what I can trigger off of for uh, for making this quest, this action in the game. So the first thing I want to do is you know, select this. So I'm going to select this and it's going to load it. And it brings up some of the information, but it's also doing some loading in the background and stuff. And, um, after you click on something, then that's where it'll really get started. So as I said, you know, Fallout's about nuclear war. And so what you want to find out is um, <clears throat> um, what do you want, uh, you know, in the you know pre-war area here. There's not it's a lot of wilderness. Uh, the, the wilderness is just like wooded area outside of <clears throat> outside of the any interior or anything. And you can see there's lots of wilderness area. Uh, there's a lot of cells. Each one of these is just a separate little cell in a grid. If you think of a a grid of squares. Uh, it's just each one of them is a separate square in a grid. If you think about like a uh, something like a Rubik's Cube, you know, Rubik's Cube kind of thing, it's, it's a big square of grid of squares. And, and each one of these is a separate square <clears throat> that has something in it. So the one that I'm most interested in, I think, is this one. The pre-war player house. That is where you start your game. You start the game in your your house before any nuclear war happens. And this is where I think we want to look first. So I'm going to double click in that, and that will get it loading. Um, to see it when it comes up, it's going to be in this other render window that's up here. And you can see it just finished loading it up, the first part of it. Now it's going to load more as we go on. And again, this is where that memory pays off. And some somewhat your graphics card, but it's doing a lot of memory work here. So, and it's going to be a little bit shaky just because this is, uh, you know, my, uh, you know, my system's not a mega system, but it has a lot of memory in it, so that helps a lot. So, if you look here, around here, you'll this is the house that ha is in here before you, when you start the game. And uh, as it turns out in the game, you're really mostly trapped inside this house. This is your house here, and you're trapped inside this house until the whole thing happens. There's a guy over here, this vault tech guy. He comes and walks across the street and talks to you, and you have to run up the hill and stuff like that. So. But most of the game, you're trapped inside this house. Now, there's a couple ways that there's a lot of actions here. So you got to be careful about how you change stuff. So that's one thing is when you're looking around this place, you got to be care careful how you do things. And um, one thing I should explain to you is um, keyboard mousing. This is, uh, I guess, a really important thing. So to go forward, you hit the scroll bar up. To go backward, you hit the scroll bar back. So up on the scroll bar or down on the scroll bar makes you go up and down. To rotate the screen around wherever you are, you hold down the shift and then move around and you can rotate around and look around. 
So <clears throat> at least for me, most of the time, that's how I get around. Um, I will scroll in, hold shift, spin around some other direction I want to go, scroll forward, sh hold shift, scroll forward or scroll out if I go too far, hold shift, oh, I don't want to go into this hallway, scroll forward. There's the female player character, um, where the male player character starts. Kind of interesting. Anyway, they're both standing there. Um, so, uh, there's the mean over the bed, which I always thought is a very interesting animation. It really is, it's only meant to be used in first person. And uh, so they only rendered for the preview the torso, because that's all you see. So it's like a headless torso where you're talking to the baby. Uh, so in any case, um, oh, there it goes. Male player, player character starts. So um, one thought I had was to just put the glasses right there in the world and just have it so that you pick up your glass, you can pick up your glasses right there. You left them on the table. Oops, go pick them up. But then that kind of means that you, while you're creating your character, you're going to be all blurry. Because it starts being blurry right at the beginning of the game. So you're creating your character and it looks all blurry while you're looking in the mirror. So I don't know if I like that very much. It's easy to do, uh, but I'm not sure. So, okay. So we, you know, we see this and this is the, you know, this is that world where you start the game, um, the tutorial world, basically, Sanctuary Hills world. So if I wanted to do it in this, when you're in this home, you need to somehow, somehow figure out which, if I wanted to do it as part of like some quest, I can say, okay, when this quest runs, um, when this quest runs, you know, do something like give you glasses, put them on, you know, uh, but I need, don't, I need to know which quest is associated with this, this world. So how do I figure that out? Well, again, this is why I have this video because a lot of the videos just assume, you know, a lot about how to research and stuff like that and debug and stuff like that in this game. And it's not that easy. Um, so that's why I thought this is a, would be a useful video. Starting from scratch, somebody that doesn't know anything. Except, you know, at least now you know how to load it up. You know how to scroll in and out. You know how to hold down shift and rotate around and look around at things. And the most uh, one of the important things that to know is that up in this, where it, this title bar, where it says Creation Kit 64-bit, if it has a star there, then that means you've changed something. And if you didn't mean to change something and move something, that's, you're going to want to just reload. Uh, and it's just, it's just easier to just reload. Because you might not know what you, known what you clicked on. Sometimes you can hit the control Z. Everybody knows that for undo. Sometimes it will work. It's a little easier to just, just reload and just make sure that you've got a fresh thing, copy that doesn't, doesn't have anything change. So if you ever see this thing go star, uh, you whatever you, your finger twitched or something, you know, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's just easier. So we need to figure out in this home, this Sanctuary Hills world, um, and this play preware player house, where is this used? So one of the the easiest ways to go and research thing is to find out where is this thing is used. So they have a wonderful thing in this, uh, is that they keep a map of how everything touches everything else. And you can just right click on something like this pre-war house and then go down to use info and it'll tell you who touches this pre-war player house. And you just click on it, so it'll give you a report. Now, usually that's very useful. Unfortunately, in this case, nobody touches it. So that's unfortunately going to make it. Uh, that's going to make it tough. 
now we need to figure out this it appears that nobody's looking at it so now we need to figure out where where that happens um, so I happen to know this is where some of this kind of knowledge is I happen to know that a lot of the quests that have to do with um, A lot of the quests that have to do with basically the, the game flow, the main quests, have to start with MS on them. So if I scroll down to MS, um, you can see a lot of the main quests here. Um, this is where it helps when you're playing the game because you'll see a lot of these names of these quests start or finish. So, um, so now we have to try and figure out which one is the right one. Um, this is certainly one of the quests you see a lot. Um, this is, um, uh, okay, so here pre-war sanctuary hills location tv station snake okay so that's so that's definitely one right here that's that's the okay so along with a a cell as cells as they're called um, that we had out of the cell view they also have what's called a location that will go along with a place so they actually have an object type for that and that is down here a bit called location and as they had there they had a location for pre-war or is it pre-war sanctuary hills location so here's pre-war sanctuary hills location so now and uh now i can do use info aha and so i can see now these are people that use that um that pre-war area. <clears throat> so these are all most interesting is probably these quests here. Player comments, that's probably not what you want. Not sure what this one is. So that might be something. And then there's this one. So I would say we look at either because we don't care about TV station or radio. That's not important. Um, or player comments really want the main beginning of the game quest as I said the quest has to do with stuff so it's either this one MQ 101 or uh, MQ 101 sanctuary hill so now let's take a look at each of these so I'm just gonna double click on this this will open up the quest okay so this is the first time we've opened a quest uh, this is uh, you know if you start out here this is um, this seems pretty good. War never changes. The very beginning of the game quest, probably. Um, so quests are, like I said, are uh, main item for the things going on in the game. And then after that, um, you'll have uh, different stages that have that go to uh you know part okay so here's this is definitely is this is so you can see right here this is the very beginning of the game you, when you play the game this all makes sense player starts talking you know says war never changes basically spouse walks into frame start tracking spouse comments that's where she says you know give me some time in the mirror and then there's a pause while you're configuring your character and then it's a shut down mirror scene uh, and then uh, player activates uh, there's player activates Sean before the crib before Cogsworth player activates Cogworth Cogworth responds uh, Cogworth uh, spouse does something else in the living room vault tech comes up and rings the bell player doesn't want to sign vault tech's at the door this is the whole sequence of the whole thing so this is where it starts so this is this is the quest in the very beginning of the game and so this is the one we want 
for sure. Um, so when this quest starts, we want, when we, this quest is running, we want to give them uh, the glasses. Uh, it looks like probably giving them even right here at 10. Uh, so this is the stage. It's like steps. Step one, step two, step three. You know, of course, they use different numbers. Step 10, step 12. It doesn't matter the numbering. They're in sequence. But it, it, it doesn't have to be one, two, three, four, five. It just is like if they, they're all in sequence. And it keeps them all in order for you. You add a new one, it'll put it in order and sort it for you and everything. But it, they're just this is a sequence of events that happens. So, um, so anything after 10 here is fine. So, uh, so that's what we want to do. We want to give them the glasses and equip them on the player um, at 10 or greater any time after that, if they don't have them equipped uh, and don't have glasses on them. We got to check for that. Do they have glasses? I don't know why they would, because the game doesn't give them to you, but but it got to make sure. Make sure they don't have glasses. Um, if they don't have glasses, give it, give a pair to them and then equip those glasses. So, and that has to stop and win this quest here. So this is all, now we've done our research. So. Um, you can either take screenshots of these kind of things because you're going to need this information for later. You need to know it's MQ101. For me, I'm just going to actually write it on a, uh, get a pen and paper and write down that I want MQ101. And that's the quest uh, name I want. And, and the stage, the step I want is stage 10. So I, I just wrote that on a small little scrap of paper I have in front of my computer here. And those are the two things I want. Um, the other thing we're going to need is we're going to need the eyeglasses uh, information. But I think that that's not going to be a problem because we'll be able to get that in the game when we make that. So, okay, so let's try and uh, do this. Um, all right, we got our use report. There's how we, there's how you research. I think actually I'm going to cut off this video right now. It's already a half hour in and it was just learning how to research thing. The next part will be on how to actually go and uh, go and create uh, the mod now that we've researched what we need to do and how we found the quest and some interesting things about use info and things like that. So uh, hope this one's been interesting and uh, click on the next one and check it out to see how I'm going to create the mod from this information and thanks for watching.